Hey, Kate here. And today I have a special guest, Alex Liu. This is a little bit of a treat. He is not a course creator. He is a game designer. Now I brought him onto this particular channel because gamification is a strategy that is often used with courses. And so today we're going to talk about what are the things that he's put into this game, because this is not just like a regular game for just fun, although that is a primary outcome of this particular game. This game was designed in order to teach people to have empathy for dogs that are in rescues. So super interesting topic. I can't wait to start this with you. Enjoy. All right, we are here with Alex. Alex, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and why you created this game? Yep, uh, I'm Alex Liu, and I am the game designer behind Dogs Bond. This is a um, two to six player board game for ages 10 and up. And what happens in it is you take on the role of a rescue dog in the rescue journey, and you're collecting and sometimes competing with one another for the attributes you need to be adopted into one of the six forever homes. What's really nice about the about our game is that everyone has a chance and an opportunity to be adopted. And so uh, with that in the story, we have a really, really fun way, fun mechanic to talk about rescue in a much more positive way. Why I created the game is when I was working and volunteering for different rescues, I think it was about seven at the height of it, all rescues needed me the same day, right? They were all doing adoption fairs at the same time, on the same day, but maybe different cities. And I just couldn't get everywhere at once. And the other thing was that I noticed children, usually around you know 10 years old, were the spearhead of a conversation with their family. Can we get a dog? Can we get a pet? I'll take care of this pet. And they may have only seen animals from you know television shows or a cartoon right? And they hadn't yet discovered and had a good conversation about responsible dog ownership. They didn't yet have that empathy because they, if you don't have an animal near you, you can't really have that discussion you know, with a child because they're learning experientially. So I combined my passions of, of you know, board games and uh, engaging with family members. You know, I have a multi-generation family and, you know, really built something that would allow us to have this conversation and open it up, have a fun time talking about the rescue journey, infusing it with energy, whimsy, play, and hope, and bringing it to the table, right? No screens, right? Let's have a true conversation. And that's how Dogs Bond started. I love it. As soon as you started talking about like kids are, are playing the role of a dog that's being adopted, not somebody who's learning, you know, the skills they need to adopt the dogs. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking experiential and I was thinking empathy. That's mm -hmm. really a fantastic um, <laughs> play on it where you're the dog and not the, the kid doing the adoption. Mm -hmm. So I know that you created this game for experiential learning. We talked a little bit about that. So can you go ahead and read the letter of the player that you've designed this game for? and why they want this game and what they want to get out of this game. I think what they Absolutely. want to get is a dog, but let's. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, uh, and this is, this is the, this is the letter of, of the student explaining why they want to play the game, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay, great. Hi, we are a multi-generational family of gamers and we are thrilled to play dogs bond. There's me, a big time board gamer, my partner, our two kids, and one parent on each side. Your game is perfect for our family size of six and the art really speaks to all ages. Our parents are a little older and they haven't played board games with us in a while because many games have too many pieces, too many rules and too many things to remember. Dogs Bond provides us with a clear instruction and enough depth to be interesting to all ages. More than that, we're excited to go through the dog's rescue journey and have a more positive way to talk to our kids about responsible dog ownership and adoption. They're at that age where they're asking, so it's important that we teach empathy towards animals, not that this is some kind of wall hanging or new blanket that they can just enjoy for a day and toss away, right? It needs to be, we wanna give it the attention that it needs. 
my goal of playing this game is to introduce my kids to some concepts about turn taking, set collection, and of course, being good winners. I also love that your project donates to real life rescues. So it's important that you raise more money to help improve the lives of animals. I'm hoping to adopt a copy of Dog's Bond into our home. Awesome. Okay, so that sounds like a lot that I can actually empathize with too in your letter cuz like my family loves to play games too and some of the some of the games we play do have a lot of pieces and a lot of rules and I'm like, you know, I'm like a, a reasonably intelligent person. <laughs> But it does get hard to play sometimes. But I do like the game, the empathy, and the artwork too. I, I actually like that. So mm -hmm. it does give us an idea of why they want to play the game and what aspects they like about gaming. So go ahead and read the letter from the same family after they finish playing the game. And of course, they have the best experience, the experience that we're shooting for. Absolutely. Thanks. Our whole family got the message. We played the roles of rescue dogs in the journey. And it was a much more positive message than I thought it could have been. We got to talking about our dogs growing up or ones that we've seen around. Our kids were excited to learn about what can happen in real life. And they understood that not all rescue dogs would come with every attribute they may be looking for, but it would be enough. The game depth was fun for all ages and interacting with one another made the game move quickly. We especially love when it's the next player's turn and we all get to bark. Even our parents got very animated and involved. At the end of the game, my youngest won and was really excited. With so many games right now focused on themes about war or financially harming another player, it was great that all players were able to be adopted into Forever Homes. After the game was put away, we still talked about what dog ownership means. We are scheduling our visit to a rescue and the good news is that we aren't taking a trip out of guilt, but really out of love. Thanks for making a fun game that enables us to talk about rescue in a much more positive way. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. I do like the uh, I, I like that letter quite a bit. So I think there is some competition based on what you're saying. It sounds like there, there but is the fact that everyone can win is is not a usual outcome for <laughs> Dave's. <laughs> Or at least any, everyone can get to the, the outcome that they're, they're searching for. And in real life, that is how it works out. Like everyone mm -hmm. can win. Everyone can get the goal that they're looking for. So that's right. I brought the game with me. So I want to go ahead and unbox it. I do like the artwork. So I'm really interested in seeing this. I haven't awesome. unboxed it yet. So this is like my true unboxing. True and unboxing video. And as I shared with Alex earlier, I had intended to play this with my kids, but the game came after the kids went on vacation. So ah. we'll play with them when they get back. And that's in just a couple of weeks. Awesome. So, beautiful awesome. roll book. It's got great artwork. Yep. And I'm guessing these are maybe. These are, those are your adopters. Those are essentially the goals in the game. Okay, so, so the families, the six families. Yep. And there are eight total adopters in the game. So that way it changes every time you play the game, gives you a lot of variety, gives you a lot of opportunity to kind of discuss who and what you're, you know, kind of most aligned with, you know, if, if that's the kind of personality you are, which is very important. Uh, we're also very proud that we have a very diverse cast of characters, both, you know, gender, age-wise, cultural ethnicities, you know, because that's the pantheon of dog adopters, right? That's the pantheon of people. And yeah. we didn't want to say that, oh, you know, the the one person who works in tech, who, you know, went to college, this college, which is my college, like is the best kind of adopter for a dog. We wanted to really diversify that and be much more inclusive. And I'm very proud that we did that. Yeah, it does look very diverse and I love it. I mean, they all look like great, friendly, kind people too. So mm -hmm. that's what yeah. you would guess out of anybody who owns an animal, right? That's it. You know, what's really fun is when we get new players to play the game, to open the box, sometimes they'll even say, wow, I know that person. That's my Nana or that's my auntie, right? And um, that's really fun too, just to have, you know, kind of the representation there. Now, these are the dogs? Yep. So those are the little uh, tabs that uh, each dog player gets. So if you're playing the game as, say, you know, right there in the center, the gold Jack Russell Terrier, right? You'll take those little punch cards and pop them out. 
And as you progress through the game, if you hold up one of the adopters again, you're going to put the little button on you know, the little tab where you're matching. So the more that you match with a particular adopter, the higher your bond is with them, right? And at the end of the game, when you have really high bond matches and bond levels, it's easiest to get adopted. Oh yeah, and they have names on it too. I didn't even notice. And they have them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And then we have the plastic bags, which we're going to need when we're done. Yep. <laughs> when you start punching stuff out and regular yep. sided dice, some beautiful cards. I want to open these up though because they look really cool. Absolutely. Love the artwork. Where did you get the art? The art was done by our illustrator, Sarah Mills, and we're very proud to have her on our team. It was great. I went to the wild, wild internet and I said, <laughs> would anybody be interested in illustrating this game and bringing it to life? And uh, over 50 different artists from around the world reached out and said, hey, I'd be interested in taking a look. We you know, we had some conversations and Sarah made the most sense. She is a lifelong dog lover. Her son Leo, who is actually the character model for our Boston Terrier in the game. So she she and I really got along well, and we're still very good friends and very proud of her and, and the work. Okay, so it looks like these cards come with a few different things, like you have instinct mm -hmm. and temperament Yep. and obedience. We all want the dog to have good obedience, right? <laughs> <laughs> we all hope, right? We all hope. <laughs> Elf. Yep. And uh, grooming. Yep. I want to say about the health thing too. Like you said, you, it's cool if a dog can have everything, but dogs may not have everything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes like I saw like a video of somebody um, adopting a dog that was very, very old and mm -hmm. um, just brought the dog home to enjoy the last years of his life. And we did the mm -hmm. same with a cat. We got a cat off the streets and we took it to the vet. We got it healthy. It only lived like a year and a half after that. And of course it, it was 10 years old when we adopted it and had lived on the street for a long time. And my mm -hmm. daughter was super, super sad when that cat passed away, but so much comforting knowing that that last year and a half, that cat had far more peace and security and love mm -hmm. than it had on the street. So sometimes Absolutely. like health may be a really good thing, but it may not be everything, right? That's right. That's right. And see, in a very abstract way, we've been able to open that conversation, right? And say, hey, this dog might not be the healthiest because of, you know, one, two, three, or, you know, previous circumstances, but to some adopters, that doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, you already called out very well, you know, the, the different attributes we have, health, grooming, obedience, temperament, that sort of thing. Our adopters, as an example, so okay. on the top row, you can see that she's interested in a dog that has obedience and grooming. That's what she cares about, right? Okay. So how healthy the dog is or what kind of temperament the dog has, that doesn't matter as much as these two sets of attributes that she's interested in, right? Okay. And so as you build your sets, as you build your, um, as you build your cards with um, obedience and grooming, you'll advance in the bond level with Agnes. Right. And then, as you're saying, sometimes some folks might look at health as a very important aspect. Right. So Winnie is looking at health and temperament. So if you do, if you're if you as a player or if you as a player dog don't have health, you won't bond with Winnie because this is what Winnie is looking for. Right. This is the kind of adopter that she is and the kind of situation that she's in. She wants a dog that she can focus on the health a little bit. So it was a really easy and, and fun way for us to kind of in an abstract manner, say, well, this dog has two, three, 10 health, right? What does that mean? You know, they get good exercise, they're, you know, at the correct weight, you know, you brush your teeth well, their, you know, their eye health is good, joint health is good, age-wise, it's working for you, right? Or, or not. Mm -hmm. And again, being able to, in an abstract manner, um, be able to talk about these things really empowers the conversation, right? You don't have to use too many euphemisms with the children. You can kind of directly say, hey, this dog has only one health, whereas this dog has six health, right? And they yeah. can kind of quantify that at a very early age. Yeah, absolutely. I can see that. And I like the fact that you're putting the attributes of the people so that those dog attributes make sense. So you've mm -hmm. got, you know, the photographer, Agnes, if yes. I remember right, she's Correct. a <laughs> photographer. So the grooming would make sense because she probably yes. wants to take pictures of her beautiful dog. That's important. That's right. 
Winnie is athletic. And so an active dog makes sense for her. So that is, that's, that's really interesting because these aren't just attributes that are abstract. They actually make sense for the lifestyle of the person who's doing the adoption. Precisely, precisely. And I could see that working with the kids too. You can talk about these attributes, like for the kids, having a dog with an activity level that's high, but a temperament that's really good because so the, you know, the dogs don't get out of hand with the young children mm-hmm. would be an important aspect. hundred percent. That's it. <laughs> okay. Well, it looks like I'm getting some of it. Then you have these really cool cards that have to do with like um, activities. It looks like. Yeah. So the, the yellow backed event cards are okay. how we tell kind of the vignette and the story, right? So all the players will have the uh, yellow backed cards Uh, face down. And when it's your turn, you'll have the rope toy (laughs) and you get to read the event card, right? And so that one that you're holding there is spilled garbage, right? And so it applies to the dog that drew the card, the player that drew the card, as well as all players at the table. So you're kind of engaged and doing things that are very active and it's uh, got a lot of energy um, in that one card, right? Because everyone all of a sudden gets to do something, just Mm -hmm. like when garbage is spilled at a rescue suddenly every dog is active, right? So um, keeps us, you know, keeps us honest. And, you know, as you turn over each card, different events occur, right? (laughs) The birthday. Yes, that one's one of my favorites. So the dog uh, player that drew the card gets to draw two attribute cards and then play one down on themselves. So let's say you drew two health cards Mm -hmm. and one is a one and one is a two. Uh-huh. You could play that health too, which will then increase your bond with Winnie, increase your bond with Hank, because that's what they're looking for, right? And so again, it allows the player to kind of be choosy and strategic about what kind of dog am I going to focus on? What kind of what kind of attributes do I want to work on and really develop so that I can advance in the game, like during the game, as well as be adopted at the end of the game with those adopters. We have eight wonderful dogs. Um, and so <laughs> that's great. So, you need to expand to 25. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, would love to, would love to. So we do have designs for what we would call giant breeds. So one would be a, the Leon Burger. Another is a Great Dane. We want to have like a Malamute, right? And these are kind of the giant breed of dogs, yeah. right? The list goes on. We have all of the designs to advance and, and kind of create more Uh, dog breed mixes, because each of these are a mix of something, right? What I learned in my research is that every or most rescues worldwide have to put down a breed type. So this breed or this dog is mostly Pomeranian, might have something else in there, Mm -hmm. right? This breed is mostly Basset Hound, but it, it is, and again, these are the breed mixes that we have in the game. And each of those kind of different breeds that we have also get different special powers. So as an example, the Jack Russell Terrier, my wife has a 15 year old Jack Russell Terrier named Smudge. The Jack Russell's ability is that when they draw a card, they may draw from the discard pile. And that all came about because Smudge, our wonderful dog, always digs in the trash. He's always, always, always in the garbage. And so I wanted to kind of commemorate and give that, you know, real life experience, a way to come through in the game, right? I can imagine it was actually pretty tough to decide on eight different dogs. Hugely challenging, hugely challenging. challenging. I love Great Dane because, you know, I had a Great Dane when I was growing up and that's kind Mm -hmm. of the thing that happens when you play this game or play with this game is that Mm -hmm. you start thinking of the stories and your bonds with dogs. I had a Great Dane and it was really cool, but I'll say all these dogs are beautiful dogs. I do. I do like Great Danes. And I do think you, you could do expansion packs because people yeah. like toy dogs or they'll like mm-hmm. organic dogs. Yep. We really want to do an expansion called the bully breeds, Staffordshire pit bulls, um, French bulldogs, English bulldogs, right? Dobermans kind of dogs that have a bad rap. Mm-hmm. And specifically my intent would be if we can get the, backing behind it and the support to do it, we would love to create these, that expansion, right? And any proceeds that we have from that would go directly to legal funds that are fighting breed specific legislation, right? Those laws that are in towns, like we can't have a bulldog here, or if we catch a pit bull mix, it'll be destroyed. These are awful, terrible, terrible laws 
that are passed in our localities and our municipalities throughout the world. And I think it's just a matter of like education and supporting those organizations, those legal organizations that are giving a voice to the voiceless. And that would be a dream, I think, for us. That would be definitely the next thing we would love to do. Go Dogs Bond. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, there's a lot of people who talk about bad kids. And, you know, I truly don't believe there are bad kids. I believe there are parents who might be having their own struggle and may not be using the right strategies for the kids or, you know, may not be able to provide the loving home that the kids need to thrive. So are there bad kids? I don't think so. Are there bad dogs? I think you could make the same argument. It's like, how was that dog raised? You know, is Mm -hmm. that, does that dog have security and love and are the right behaviors being rewarded? Exactly. Precisely. Yep. It's said best, I think, by one of our rescue partners, Addie Dawes from the uh, Golden Gate Basset Rescue back at home. And uh, she said, you know, dogs get into the shelter system for all kinds of reasons, right? Through no fault of their own. And really having a rescue journey and talking about rescue uh, and adoption gives them that second chance at life. And Mm -hmm. that's exactly what Dogs Bond is all about. It's all about uncovering that again, in a positive light, not guilt-based marketing, right? Mm -hmm. But really being able to have a positive conversation that can lead to more successful adoptions. All right. So let's talk a little bit about empathy. What does empathy for animals do for people in general or kids specifically? Absolutely. So in our game, the players take on the role of a dog. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you're a dog. You open this game, right? And that in of itself kind of gets people lower to the ground, a little bit more centered, closer to the table, because you're now dealing with a bit more primal needs, food, water, shelter. That's what you're looking at. You're not complicated by um, what was on TV or who's got more followers. It doesn't matter as much, right? And so you become the dog and you focus on what's important to you, as well as through the event cards that we have, it shares that it's really about a point in time dogs don't dwell too much on the past and they also don't really know what's happening in the future, right? It's up to, to your earlier point, what the owner or what the foster is able to give them, right? And what they're rewarding and how they grow and how they learn and in how they develop skills. So the empathy here is that you are trying your very, very best. And sometimes you might have been dealt a bad paw of cards, get it because dogs don't have hands they have paws and so (laughs) we we really share in that in that story and allow the player ages 10 to 110 to kind of think about that and think that through and in demonstrating through the game that there are no bad attributes it's just what does the dog think they're going to be most rewarded for in that moment How are they making the best choice that they can make given the information available and the resources that they have, right? And that for us is how we've been able to really demonstrate and teach empathy for the animals because all of a sudden kids who may never have considered, right? Oh, I need to work on my temperament. I need to work on my grooming or the human that's interested in health is going to need this amount, right? They've never thought about it that way. And so it really puts that and shifts that perspective for the player to be the dog. And that's how we've been able to teach empathy in a really successful way. Okay. So I want to go into this goal here is to teach. And rather Mm -hmm. than using a course or a dog owner's course or something like that, you've decided Mm -hmm. to teach with a game. Now, a lot of times people, they want to teach something. So they automatically go into, well, we need to have a training for owners or something (laughs) like that. And maybe we gamify it. And you've done kind of the opposite. You're like, I want to teach them (laughs) and I'm going to do it through a game. So why the game? And have you tried like training and stuff like that before? Yeah. So um, my day job, I've done, you know, training management and I've actually authored training. I've done voiceovers for computer-based trainings. So I'm no stranger to kind of the framework of going from awareness to advocacy, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Same principles really apply when you're working in and and working for rescue. So for us, I wanted to entertain first. Yeah. Because as we know, and the reason why gamification is so popular is 
that when you're playing a game and where you're being rewarded, usually you can learn some things sometimes three to five times faster. I don't know exactly the you know science behind it, but I know that when you're playing a game and you see that there are perks, rewards, consequences, opportunity cost, you start to really think about and drill into those subjects and those lessons much more deeply, right? I'm thinking about some of the language learning courses that I do, right? How many day streak do you have of yeah. coming to this app or this course and completing a day's worth of lesson, right? Or do you have this badge or that badge because you've completed X task within a month? For Dogs Bond, yeah, we wanted to start as a game. We wanted to work through those conversations in a fun and accessible way. And frankly, the learning is almost that side benefit, right? right? Entertainment, being delighted by the artwork, engaging with your family in a way that's not screen-based or time-based, right? Allows you to kind of sit around the table and build those deeper memories with each other as a family. One thing that I struggled with was my youngest nephew was just coming to me. And the only thing that he knew how to connect to me with was look at this video or look at this picture on my screen. And you know what? In a month, it doesn't matter what video you showed me at Christmas. I want to remember a time when we sat down, invested the time and energy to play a game with one another and really have a great time. Right. So that was a lot of the impetus around creation of Dogs Bond. And then, of course, yeah, I wanted my family to kind of come out of the experience uh, better for it. Yeah, I will say that with, when it comes to games, there's basically three benefits that I can think of off the top of my head that we can use and apply to learning. And one is attention. Because mm -hmm. you know, you're grabbing people's attention. People don't learn without attention. If the game was boring or the artwork was bad or mm -hmm. it was too complicated, you would not be able to maintain attention and you would not be able to be successful. The other is motivation. So mm -hmm. that's where you're talking about badging, like earning badges or the streaks mm -hmm. or like you, you've got this idea of going towards a goal. That's some motivation. So you're continuing to stay in the game. And then the third is experiential, which is a tricky thing because with experiential learning versus lecture-based, I'm going to tell you what you should learn, or I'm going to give you information and have you do a multiple choice question. So if I give you a multiple choice question and then you choose the right one and I say, fantastic, you got it right, or nope, sorry, you got it wrong, try again. You can know if you got it right or wrong, but you don't necessarily know the consequences of the wrong choice. And mm -hmm. with experiential learning, you are basically get, learning from the consequences of those choices. Mm -hmm. But there's less control from the designer's standpoint about mm -hmm. those lessons being properly picked up. So experiential learning is very tricky and you can't just throw it out there with just anything. Like you really have right. to think about what those topics are and like, kind of build in the borders like mm -hmm. say, say my son's playing destiny and the yep. experiential learning will be kind of like well if i use this weapon or this particular if i go this particular way then i'm going to not achieve the objective but if right. i go you know, <clears throat> this particular tool and i'm going this particular way and use this particular strategy i will achieve the objective but you have to kind of trust that the people can figure that out and that right. they're willing to restart and that they don't get frustrated. So experiential learning can work, but it also can be frustrating. That's why we try to build those gamification elements in learning because they're mm -hmm. helpful. Yeah. And that's why it was so important for us in the board game to create in it different replayability kind of metrics, right? Yeah. Um, so when you place the adopters, they're in houses one, two, three, four, five, and six. House number six gives you six points. House number one gives you one point, right? And so thinking about what is it that's going to drive and reward the different actions that I'm taking. So each player is playing a game. There is a winner who becomes top dog based on the points, but all of the players are able to be adopted into a forever home. And it's not like, oh, you mentioned Destiny or any other game where it's, if you're not the top dog, you're wiped off the planet or something, you know, or horrendous happens, right? In our game, you're able to say, okay, well, everyone did find a forever home. 
Mm -hmm. You got the most points because you made the most bond because you had the best bond and the most matches, but everyone does go home happy. So. Yeah. And they go home with most perfectly matched with them, Precisely. which is what it sounds like. So yes, exactly. That, that's really good. So what is this? This is the rope toy. And this is a first player or current player token. So when it's your turn, you have the rope toy. You're the person uh, and player who get to draw the yellow event card read it aloud. Sometimes it will be towards just you, the player that drew the card, or it will engage other players as well, like that spilled garbage that we saw earlier. When you're done playing the cards, it's time to pass the rope toy to the next player. And everyone at the table is required to bark at one another, right? So it's a very interesting and kind of different way to keep the players engaged and animate the players. Our younger players really love this because they get to bark almost every 10 seconds or 20 seconds, right? So they're really enjoying it. The energy is always up at the table. And let me tell you, when I've play tested this, you know, I've got my 16 and 18 year old nephew niece, and they're just too cool for school, right? And so in between turns, when they're playing on their phone, guess what? When we barked at them two, three times, that phone goes away. There's no time for this. I am here. I am in the present. I'm enjoying the company of the people that I'm playing with, as well as being present in the game, right? And, and present at the table for us, which was really nice. And this all came about because my college dog, Kona, and I, we would play rope and we would pull it back and forth for hours. I mean, she never got tired and I worked on also never getting tired of it. And we play and play and play. And I love that dog. And she taught me so much about being a good dog owner and a good dog parent. And so I wanted a way to give homage to the wonderful experience and profound impact that she had had on my life. And I'm very happy that it's uh, <laughs> in every game. That's awesome. Now, I don't think I could bark quite like this dog. Have you ever heard this one? <laughs> <laughs> I have a very distinct, um, I don't know. A yowl, yowl, yes. <laughs> yeah, like a yes. yowl. I think, <laughs> I think they've got the cutest sound ever, but I don't think I could pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> See, but that's the, that's the beauty of it, right? When you're playing in a game, you're, you're meant to be silly. You're yeah. meant to kind of drop that guard and not be so defensive, right? When you're playing a game with people, you're already saying to them, I'm interested in building a, a bond with you, right? And so you know, for us, this game is about finding your forever home and building kind of the attributes that you need to do that. I don't, I couldn't think of a better way to exemplify the bonds of friendship, the bonds of love, and really kind of putting that all on the table. All right. So when are we going to have a cat's bond? <laughs> that's the number one question I get. And sure, I'm sure. But, you know, there's a lot of cat lovers out there. And uh, I love dogs so, yeah. and cats, but I currently have a cat. So currently have a cat. Yeah, no, it's a great question. We actually have been talking about working on it probably next year or the year after. Dogs Bond came about because I grew up with dogs. I have much more experience with dogs and um, kind of that training aspect. And that's where I was volunteering. So it was very much in my sphere mm -hmm. and being able to tell a more authentic story because I knew more about these breeds. So that said, you know, the cat version, um, it's not just a reskin. If you yeah. think about Star Wars Monopoly or Avengers Monopoly, right? Or, or Disney Monopoly or anything else, you kind of know what you're getting into when I say Monopoly, but then the theme is pretty much the same right? The, or the theme is different, the art is different, but the gameplay is the same. We wanted to do that, but in a kind of true to form manner. So as an example, in Dog's Bond, we have obedience. Mm -hmm. And that's what you build your skill with to be adopted. I don't think any cat owner would say, yeah, I got my cat based on how obedient they were. So nope. we're going to have to retool a few things <laughs> to make it work. Um, yeah. But we do have ideas. Um, and yeah, and I would I would be working with the same team. So Sarah for the art, um, Kiki for, for our graphic design. They're just by dream team. Um, and so, yeah, Cats Bond, maybe by 2024 or 25, you know, we could go back to Kickstarter and see if people have that level of support for the cats and go from there. 
Yeah, I agree. Because dog owners tend to be different than cat owners. There's people who are kind of in between that like cats and dogs. That would be me. But there's mm-hmm. other people that are fiercely love dogs. And there are mm-hmm. others that fiercely love cats. So if you wanted yes. to go to them, you have to think, well, what are the attributes that mm-hmm. cat lovers are looking for in a cat? Correct. Right. And and also, you know, to your earlier point about building that empathy, how do you build empathy for a cat? Because I think it's a little different than a dog right? The cat is developing different skills and is um, interested in different things. And so are the cat adopters. So having the, as an example, our spilled garbage card mm-hmm. probably has no bearing and no meaning to a cat, right? Yeah, so probably the one spilling the garbage. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> yeah. So building an empathetic experience, you know, an authentic experience for the game will require some additional research. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely. Once somebody does find their match, so they go to the shelter and they find a great match. They went through the game, so they have the empathy. They're looking for a good match based on the qualities and attributes that are important to them and their family. What can they do to be a good dog keeper? I, I hate to use the word owner, but you know, like to be a, to a dog adopter, right? Dog adopter, yeah. I think empathy is a good start, but they may need more skills. See, and this is this is exactly why I wanted to build a board game to demonstrate and build that empathy so that they can go to the actual real life rescues with these kinds of questions, right? You can learn a ton from board games in terms of the experiential learning. You can learn also a lot of factoids. Like if I had made this a trivia game rather than an actual interactive board game, but all of those things can be found online or at your real life rescue. Most of the volunteers, I mean, they're big hearted individuals who are donating their time, their money, their homes to take care of these animals. And they usually get a good sense for what kind of animal they have in their care, in their, in their rescue. So if you decide that you're looking for a dog that has a high energy level, but a good temperament for small children, ask the rescue. The rescue will probably know this dog might work for you or not, right? They'll ask you questions about what's your home layout look like. If you're in a small apartment and the dog is quite large and needs a big area to run around in, are you willing to do two to three walks a day to make sure that your dog isn't bored and physically cooped up in an apartment? Can you do that, right? And they will ask those questions. I think it's really important that within this board game, we give the opportunity to start the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. And who better to discuss and support those, any family, than your real life local rescue, right? Right. So for us, you know, we, we have a lot of support in the San Francisco Bay area. That's where I'm from, as well as, you know, Appleton, Wisconsin, and, you know, New York city. And that's who you should go to talk with, talk amongst your local rescues, because not only will you be able to find out the best kind of match for you, and they'll kind of help you with that, you also have play dates. You have a support community that will build upon and, and, and be there to support you in your journey to become a more educated, to be a more prepared dog adopter. Yeah. Now let's say that we have somebody who's watching this interview and says, I've been thinking about a course, but now I'm thinking maybe I need to create a game. hmm I know that's probably a a really, really involved question to answer, (laughs) but how do you go about creating a game? Well, I'm a huge board game nerd, very much so. And I love games. So I've played a lot of short games, party games, what we call heavy games, lightweight games. And Dogs Bond is purposefully designed with the expectation that anyone ages 10 and up is playing it. So it's a gateway game. It involves set collection, so very similar to how, you know, with a standard 52 deck of cards, you're playing, you know, poker, right? You know that you want to get four aces. There are, you know, uh, there's one in 13 chance that you're going to get an ace card. You want to hold on to that card. So it's those kinds of little clues and game mechanics that you can start with, right? What makes a fun game and what is it that you like doing that, you know, you could use to build a game? And I think some game designers will focus on that, 
look at the game, look at the game dynamics, resources, scarcity is sometimes a good motivator, right? And designed by those mechanics. For me, I actually went the opposite way. So I started with the story and I said, well, within a rescue journey, there is a beginning, a middle and an end, right? And so in the beginning, you are all just your one dog. That's all you've got. These are, you know, kind of the, the cards you've been dealt. And as you go along, right, the middle is growth. The middle is change and playing the different cards, the different attribute cards that we talked about to fulfill the needs and desires of our adopters. And then at the end of the game, when you have the highest bond level, you're trying to roll for adoption and you get adopted, right? And that's the end. Kate, I don't know if you want to, uh, I will as well, pick up one of your, your dog cards there and pick up one of your adopters. So I'll pick April as an example. Wonderful. And you've got Yasmin and the Jack Russell. So what we've got here is, you know, at the end of the game, the Jack Russell is adopted by Yasmin and the Golden Retriever is adopted by April. And to celebrate each and every one of these adoptions, go ahead, flip over the cards. So you flip over your adopter board and you flip oh. over your uh, dog there. And it's a wonderful vignette talking about kind of that happily ever after picture. Right. And so for us, it was all about telling that story visually as well. So the art really helps drive home this sense that every adoption is special and we do celebrate them. I love that. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even realize that. That is a really cool special <laughs> moment right there. Right. And you know that when you've got kids or young adults or grownups uh, playing this game and you've worked through this 45 60 minute experience you've built your own kind of dog you've earned the right to flip those cards over and have that happily ever after and we're really proud about the way that the images get to come to play together and really do allow everyone to have that moment right to share and celebrate any adoption that happens yeah you know what's interesting is in almost every course that i create and every lesson i'm looking for creating a memorable moment some mm -hmm. moment in that lesson that yep. people know and you can't always do it but some subjects that you train on are inherently boring so mm -hmm. right so <laughs> i actually created a viral drain cleaning video so i challenge like can you make it interesting if i can do a drain cleaning video that goes viral you know within my <laughs> thing i think you can do almost anything but this right here this is a really good memorable moment this is like exactly. wow i didn't expect this i didn't see this coming and mm -hmm. so it was super super cool yep. i love it it's very emotional too it is right because you know you as the dog have been working your whole rescue journey to get to this moment and finally you get adopted and then it's, you know, really just kind of where is that dog and how special is that? We chose purposefully, you know, kind of that sunset, finishing at the park, you know, had a good time, time to go home, yeah. right? And that's really, again, the message that we really wanted to emphasize through the gameplay, through the storytelling and through the art. So that's how Dogs Bond was designed. Other game designers are way more about like, oh no, it's got to have bigger numbers mean we're having more fun. Like, I, I don't necessarily ascribe to that. Um, I've played those games and I do enjoy them and I love them. But for us, you know, we wanted to keep it simple, keep it grounded. And mm -hmm. as a gateway game, we're really hoping that when we are starting to be in more and more game collections. We are in that family game closet of games that we know we're going to play. Again, we purposefully designed it where it's a 45 to 60 minute experience, about 15, 50 minutes per player. And that allows you, you know, to, to say, hey, we're going to set this up, we're going to play it, and then we can clean it up. So it's the game you play when you're meeting up with each other for Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. You know that something's going to happen. We're going to have to clean this up real soon and real fast. But for now, we can play and enjoy our time together. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I love the lessons that it teaches. I love the focus on empathy. And mm -hmm. I like the fact that it works with, like you said, multi-generational. So it appeals to young and old. So it, mm -hmm. is, it is really beautiful. Anybody who wants to create a game needs to find a good artist too. <laughs> a good graphic Absolutely. Designer, so. <laughs> Absolutely. You can do what I did and go to the wild, wild internet. 
there are many, many new resources for individuals who are interested in creating board games. Um, there are Facebook groups, there are Discord servers, Instagram channels that all deal with connecting artists to game designers. You know, and, and I was really fortunate. My art team, they are best friends, Kiki and Sarah. And so essentially they adopted me and they were like, yeah, we can help you out. Art direction is tough. I am by no means an artist. Join us on social media, uh, Dogs Bond Game on your favorite platform, and you'll see some of the initial drawings. And when I was looking for an artist, you know, I posted and I said, if I don't find an artist to help me with this game, this is the art you can come to expect. And people actually were like, oh my gosh, someone help this guy. <laughs> I think we all need help. We all have our strong points and then we all have our points at which it's time to ask for help. But yes. you know, <laughs> I, I purposefully believe we're designed and created with special gifts and other gifts are given to other people. So. That's right. That's it. <laughs> so we need each other. I do also, I have to say that a lot of the learning that we create or that I work with is for an individual. So a group of individuals who are all kind of on the special journey, you might say like, their moms, all new moms or something like that. But this particular game is really geared toward teaching a whole family. So a game mm -hmm. is actually a very good method for getting everybody involved and having it fun at the same time. So you can mm -hmm. create the conversation. Uh, exactly. Conversations that are really important. When you talk about adopting a dog, it really needs to be a whole family talking about it. Correct. Again, another reason why you need to kick, to all come to the game table, or in my case, growing up, the kitchen table that became the game table, yep. right? Having an opportunity and, and a device that would bring us together that can, as you mentioned earlier, hold the attention of the player, be engaging through the art and the story, give them a very clear goal, right, of being mm -hmm. adopted, or maybe your goal is, I want to be top dog. Like that's an okay goal too. And I think it's really important, especially for parents and grandparents as they play with children who are still learning to match colors, make sets, understand different valuations. The game allows for all of this and allows you to kind of play as vigorously as you want to, or as gently as you need to with different players. So yeah, my kids are pretty fierce. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while I win and I don't know how it happens because they're pretty fierce. They don't lose. <laughs> yep. You have to earn it, right? Or they'll they'll beat each other. Yes. <laughs> so yes. Yep. It, it mm -hmm. sometimes has some pretty hard feelings, but at least we get to talk about it. So exactly right. And these are the memories that I think carry through for us as people, as families, right? The, mm -hmm. the story of, you know, hey, do you remember that time we were playing Dogs Bond and this moment happened and you got up and blew up or, or it was so incredible because something happened? That's what we talk about, right? Not the video that you showed me on your phone for 30 seconds of someone else having a good time. We are creating our own memories and it's a much more authentic experience together. So that was my guiding star when mm -hmm. I was designing. I, I feel very proud about it. Awesome. So we're going to put all your contact information down below attached to Wonderful. this video because we want people to be able to get this game. Um, mm -hmm. And they, if they have questions about how to create a game, like you said, that a lot of that information is on the internet, but sure. I can't guarantee that people might not want to reach out to you and ask you. <laughs> I would love that. I would welcome it. Yeah, absolutely. Shoot me an email, um, alex at dogsbondgame.com. I'll do my best to answer your questions about game design. And if I can't answer it, I will send you to the resources that can. Yes. In the same way, if people have interest in taking gamification concepts and putting them into the course, I know a lot about gamification and how to use it in a course. And when you talk about gamification, it's really just a whole bunch of tools. It's like mm -hmm. a smorgasbord of different strategies that you can use. And you don't want to necessarily turn a course into a game, but you can use strategies that games use to mm -hmm. increase the attention span, to increase the motivation and to create Absolutely. experiential learning. So that is something I can help with. So we've got something for everybody here. <laughs> <laughs> we got you covered. <laughs> if, if you get through the whole interview, the whole podcast, we've got you covered. We got you covered. Okay. Thank you, Alex. I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much, Kate.
I hope you enjoyed that interview with Alex. I know I did. This artwork, this game was really, really amazing. I had my own memorable moment just putting the dog on the back of the card. That is just such a beautiful touch and a beautiful end of the game. And I think this is kind of the outcome that we all want for every person, for every dog, for everything that doesn't have a home to be connected and bonded with someone who is loving and kind and this is just really, really awesome. So if you're interested in learning more about Alex and his game and where to buy the game, the link's below. If you're interested in connecting with me in order to figure out like, how can I put gamification elements into my course? You can connect with me because I have used it many times in many courses to great benefit. Have a beautiful day. Mm -hmm.